mononucleosis, specifically infectious mononucleosis, commonly referred to as either mono or the kissing disease. While there are numerous bacteria and viruses that can cause symptoms that fit under this mononucleosis moniker, the majority of the cases that will be presented clinically are going to be caused by the Epstein-Barr virus, another one of those viruses in the herpes virus family. What's a bit of an issue with infectious mononucleosis is the incubation period. Exposure and then one to two months later, you begin to see the onset of symptoms. That's why as a clinician, or if you've been a patient and you've had a sore throat and you've gone to see somebody about it, you know, your doctor, a PA, a nurse practitioner, whatever, and they've asked you about history of the people in your house. Anybody else got sore throats? Anybody you know got sore throat? Oh yeah, so-and-so had a sore throat last month, you know, a few weeks ago, blah, blah. So that way, if you've been exposed to somebody who's had symptoms similar to, that's a ding, ding, ding. This is something that is contagious. This isn't just your normal strep throat. This isn't, you know, the normal, you know, my allergies are causing drainage down the back of my throat, you know, that's bothering me type thing. Because look at the symptoms. Sore throat, okay, allergies, you know, could cause that. The high fever. This is where we start to get a problem. Allergies may cause a low fever. You know, if somebody's got sinusitis, an infection of their sinuses, okay, that drainage and whatnot could cause the sore throat, but it's going to again be a low grade fever. Mono is going to cause a high fever. 101, 102, 103. The cervical lymphadenopathy means that the lymph nodes under the jawline in the, you know, the are going to swell up because remember your throat, your face, your mouth, all those lymphatics are draining to those lymph nodes. When you go and you look in their throat, as the clinician, you look in their throat, you're going to see um, what's called an exudate. There's going to be like a film, a gray-white film covering parts of their throat. So people are going to have a rash. And another Many of them, most of them, are going to have an enlarged spleen or liver. Take all of this, and in the latter stages of the mononucleosis, patients are going to be complaining about fatigue. They're always tired. You know, you know that's going to be another big hallmark oh i sleep 12 hours and i'm still tired and i've got this fever and i don't know what to do and blah 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 here's the scary thing the majority of people listening to this lecture you already have the epstein-barr virus it's there for a lot of us it's just part of our normal flora it's just that at some point in time it becomes opportunistic Uh, first exposure is generally going to be, it's not going to be an early childhood thing. This is going to be more in the teenage years for a lot of people. Hence, this was, you know, the teenage disease, the kissing disease. Because about the teenage years, you start to get a little frisky. Those hormones start kicking in. That's also seems about the time you're going to get exposed. Because you look... Most common mode of transmission, direct oral contact, okay? The swapping of spit, hence the kissing disease. And, you know, so for those of you who plan to have kids, you want to warn them, you know, you want to keep them on the straight and narrow, just tell them all about this, and this is why you don't go around kissing boys. There you go. Treatments for mono, basically... For the most part, if their symptoms are very mild, keep them home, keep them away, supportive, you know, try to keep them comfortable. 
this will clear out given time. Hospitalization is rarely needed. Um, the only time it's really going to be needed is when the spleen or the liver become really, really swollen. Okay, this gets into the bloodstream, starts causing the B cells, the T cells to start multiplying, and then you get lymph nodes swelling. That remember that lymphadenopathy, but you also get the spleen increasing in numbers in there so the spleen will actually start to expand because the internal pressures of all the cells so on rare occasions they patients may have to have their spleen removed but again rare